Hi there, my name is Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And it's time to rebuild that silver Yamaha Viking that came in with the accident damage on the front left hand corner. After about a month we've finally managed to get all the bits together. Um, Ian Cameron down at um, Motorcycle City in Takapuna, the Yamaha dealer there, has as always been incredibly helpful in getting all these bits and pieces together and gathered up from around the world. Some parts have come from Japan, some are from Australia, and we had one or two here in New Zealand. And I'm hoping that everything that I ordered is here. It looks like it is. So um, we're going to make a move. There's not too big a job to put that corner back together. So there's one or two little bits and pieces to transfer across that didn't get damaged in the accident. Um, things like uh, the disc guard on the knuckle joint, we're going to transfer that across. Very simple. Um, everything gets thread lock, which is standard for Yamaha. Uh, for this kind of stuff, we don't want bolts coming loose. Uh, we've got a disc to fit now. Um, I've taken all the packaging off. But these discs come uh, vacuum packed nowadays from, from, from Yamaha and they're coated in a protective anti-corrosion spray, basically like a spray grease. So I have to clean all of that off before I can fit that uh, to the vehicle. Really important. Now the new components, the new A-arms come with the bushes pre-fitted. Um, on these newer Vikings they use what looks like a metalastic type bush in there which is pressed in um, as opposed to the old style we used to get on the quad bikes where it was two halves that you push in and then put a metal tube in between. These are a bit more durable, can I say. Uh, less chance of mud and grit getting inside the actual bush itself and destroying it. Uh, what else have we got to sort out? Well, we've got the new hub, so that's where, the, that's where we're going to be fitting the disc onto there. And again, of course, as always on any kind of quad bikes, motorcycles or even cars, there'll be thread lock on those bolts. Now, as I go through the video, I'm not going to tell you the torque settings audio, uh, through audio. I'll actually use uh, an extract from the manual on the video so you can see the actual torque setting, the specification for each of the bolts that I'm tightening up. Okay, um, now one of the ball joints, uh, the lower ball joint, comes fitted to the new knuckle, as is already the wheel bearings are in there and uh, all the... Um, the seals, they're already in place as well. So that unit's pretty much good to go, except for that discard to fit. I do, however, still have the uh, the upper ball joint to fit. Now, if you remember rightly, the upper ball joint was the one that got really badly damaged in the accident when we took the boot off to have a look and see just how bad that was. And uh, that was really the main problem. Although we had found some other bits and pieces that were a bit bent as well that needed to be changed. And in all honesty, you know, if, if you. Some places wouldn't go to the extent of checking all the components like I did. Um, the customer was extremely um, insistent on me doing uh, checking everything, basically. This is a brand new vehicle, and of course, he wants the vehicle putting back to original. It wasn't his fault the vehicle got damaged, so why should he suffer? But a lot of places would just spot that and change the ball joint, chuck it all back together, hey, she's good enough for what we want. Um, and in all honesty, it probably would be okay to use, but it wouldn't be as new, it wouldn't be as it should be. You may have problems with camber, caster, tracking, all that kind of thing, causing tyres to scrub, and over a period of time, the front left-hand tyre would wear more than the rest of them, and you know it would cost you more to run in the long run. So, let's get it right, do the job properly right from the start, do what the customer wants. The insurance company is quite happy to pay for all of that. Isn't that why insurance is there? Okay, so I'm going to fit a few bits and pieces here on the bench. Once we've done that transfer, then we'll move over to the vehicle, which is already in the workshop, just, and um, start bolting it all up. Right, new thread lock. God, we're spending all, all this new gear that keeps arriving. It's great. All paid for, though. Right, thread lock. 
And this is the, the good stuff, the 263 Loctite, which basically is the high strength stuff. Because in all honesty, most of this stuff will never need to be undone again, or it'll be a very long time before it needs to be undone again, so we'll just leave it alone. Use the decent stuff, and it shouldn't come undone. Been a long time waiting to get done as this job. Things took a bit longer than planned. Sorry, Bernard. That's not Bernard from Black Books, by the way. That's Bernard, the owner. Right. Oh, okay. Three of them. Right. That's now scrap. That get the new one, get the device, a bit of thread lock, right? A little bit of thread lock. So, yes, hopefully, I can find some new Yamaha shirts because they're really comfy. And they're a lot better than uh, just wearing a t-shirt, to be honest. Oh, 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 oh nearly. So what happens when you've been teaching all day how to use lathes, then you come home and do a it's a full day's work the workshop, but it's not far off really. It'll be a good five, six hours. Which is sort of a full day's teaching actually. Okay, so watch out on the screen for the torque setting for these bolts that retain that discard. Because they'll be on there somewhere. I will find them, I promise you. Okay. So that is now done, all happy with that. Uh, the next job is, I suppose, the disc to clean up and to mount onto there, and we've got the four bolts. Okay, that's easy enough. Yep, that works. Okay, very clean. And a nice clean rag is what we need. And it's really important that you do this, otherwise it's going to contaminate the brake pads. Um, with the, this special greasy stuff that they put on. And then the vehicle, when you brake, is going to pull to one side. And Bernard won't be very happy. Now, with this disc, it is sided. You see on there, look, we've got some little tiny recesses just on the disc there, look, and that's for the bolt head to slightly recess. So that's important that you put it right around. So that's the recess upwards towards the bolt head. And again, some thread lock. Thread lock is good. Okay, one, 
That's one. There we go. Six, six mil Allen key for these, which is that one there. And again, watch uh, at the bottom of the screen, you should get the torque setting for these as well. Now, when you're fitting a disc, always tighten up the bolts evenly. Um, so don't just do one and then the adjacent one, because again, that can cause the disc to warp. And I'll be tweaking these up very shortly with the torque ring. There we go. Right. Done. Next job is to fit the ball joints, the upper ball joints, to the top arm. And I've removed the gator, and the reason why I've done that is I want to press this into position. And if I have the gator in place, there's a risk I'm going to trap it in the uh, in the socket and cut the gator. So I've taken the gator off, wherever the hell that's gone, there we are, look. And I'll refit that once it's in situ. So that needs to go in from underneath, under there, look. And I'm going to use a couple of sockets. I'm going to press it in on one side with that, and then the other socket on top, and it'll push through. So I'll get set up in the, uh, in the press, and then you can watch it work. Oh, just a socket to get off now. Done. Well, that was easy. Okay. okay, so all that's left now is to fit the circlip. I'm trying to do all of this without taking too much paint off the actual uh, new part. So we'll do that. There we go. On a circlip, just as a as a hint, if you look at it, you've got a, sh a side with a sharp edge and a side with a rounded edge. And believe it or not, it should be the sharp edge should be upwards, okay? Because that gives it a really sharp shoulder and it digs in. Um, whereas if you use the rounded one, it's more likely to spring out. It's always the sharp edge. Okay, so sharp edge, there we go. Put that in there. Easy, isn't it? Okay. Right. So that's now ready for the boot to go back on again, which is pretty easy. Okay. So plenty of grease in there, which is good. I'll just put a bit up the shaft just to help it to go on. There we go. Get it over the lip. Okay. Might do a magic screwdriver for that. If you're going to use a screwdriver for this, don't use one that's too sharp. Because if you do, then it will damage the boot. And, uh, well, you will knack at it basically, won't you? Nearly on. There we go. Right, so all that's left now, put some air in there, there we go, 
is to fit the little clip. Dum, dum, dum. Fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. Yeah. Right. We're almost there. Done. Okay, boot is on. Now we do have some top hat washers. So these washers go, there we go, that's the underneath, go to the rear side of the bushes. You'd have thought they'd have them on both sides, but no, they're only on the rears. Yes, there are no more spares, so on the rears of the base and well the front edge of the top arm okay so let's do the lower arm first and oops we need to go on there there we go okay Easy. right so we've got all new bolts as well so we need a bit of grease I'm just going to grease this whole thing up because there's there's actually no grease nipples on these newer ones. Um, so just a little bit of grease is going to help on the reassembly. And we can do all of that here on the bench before we stick it back on the vehicle. That way up. There we go. Should be weird anyway. Right. And this is just your standard lithium grease, nothing, uh, nothing too special, to be honest. And we can wipe any excess off later on once it's assembled. Get out the tube. There we go. Then the special stick. Now, two new bolts, we're ready to go. Okay, so, lower arm going in, bolts from the front to the back. That's one. Two, there we go. Let's go put the nuts on. It's been a long day. Okay, 14 and a 17 spanner size. Cool. And again, I'll put on the screen whatever the torque setting is for these. Hmm, I think I'll just lift it up a little bit before we tweak it so the bushes are resting naturally where they want to be on the normal use. Let's just try and hold that there. There we go. Cool.
Okay, so that's the low arm now in position. Now for the top arm. Okay. Right, said Fred. Let's just get a bit more grease onto these. If you don't put grease on, you put the rubbers on dry then there's a possibility you're going to get some squeaks from the suspension over time. And this grease doesn't damage the rubber, so it can only be a good thing. It's going to help to reduce corrosion and any possible squeaky noises which we don't really want. There we go. Okay, now on this particular one, on the top arm, these little covers, the top out, well, top hat washers there, not really. They go on the forward side. There we go. Right. Okay, so two more bolts, two more nuts, and away we go. Top arm. Goes. Oh, too far. Right, goes in there like that. It's not easy with the camera, though, you know. One and just double checking the bolts go. Yes, in from the front again. And nuts. One. Two. Excellent. Now again, we want to lift that up to its normal sort of resting position just before we finally tweak it because otherwise that bush is constantly going to be sort of in its sheer position. There you go, that's what we want. And that's probably going to reduce its life, so it's always good to line things up at the start. So I'll put on the screen for you the torque setting for these four bolts. There we go. And I'm going to whiz around at the end and just torque everything up. Okay, so the next job is to install the knuckle joint. And through the middle of the knuckle joint we have the wheel bearings and that's where the drive shaft sits. So I'll grab that now. And now I'm going to put a bit of, a bit of grease on the seals and stuff so you can watch me do that first. Okay, so um, the next We've done the lower and then the top arms. The next step is to install the knuckle joint. Now, these knuckle joints come essentially pre-assembled. They've got the wheel bearings in there. They're all pre-greased. Um, we've got the, the seals already fitted for us. But we need to put grease on these seals. If we don't, they're going to tear uh, when they make contact with that rotating shaft and they're going to wear really quick. So plenty of grease on the seals, both seals, there we go, look. And that grease also helps to, well, help the seal to seal actually, keep all the dirt and the grime out, we don't want those wheel bearings getting contaminated. The wheel bearings do have their own seals but they're only dust seals, they're not um, they don't in any way keep water and stuff out. That's the job of these main seals here. And if you look at that one there, look, it has the sort of big flappy dust seal here that runs on the back of the back of the hub. And then inside we've got two more lip seals inside there. So the any contaminants have to get through this seal and then the two inner seals as well. So it's three seals before they actually enter the wheel bearings. And the same goes on this side. 
So they're pretty well sealed up. Good job, Yamaha. So just before we offer the knuckle joint up, again, a bit of grease around this area here. This is what runs on that rear seal. So it's important that we have a bit of grease on there. And I'm always one for putting a bit of grease on the splines too. A, it's going to help to engage the whole thing and um, make it a downside easy to pull it apart next time around as well. There we go. Cool. Right. Now, so lift that up, put the lower bore joint in, Hang on. drop that in there, there we go, and then Lower ball joints, get the lower ball joint nut in position so it can't come out. There we go. And then upper ball joint and nut. And again, there's a torque setting for these, and I'll put that on the screen for you when I do those up. Okay, so 17 mil spanner. We have all of those. Oh no, I'm wrong, it's a 19. Mm, okay, so 19 mil spanner for these ones. Jolly. Okay. I'm just gonna tweak them up for now. Now you've got to remember when you tighten these things up, you also need to bear in mind that you've got to align the hole with the castle nut for your split pin. That's pretty critical. Okay, that's tight enough for now. Now, what should we do next? Should we fit the steering arm or the hub? Hmm. Steering arm, I think, and that's gonna hold everything in place. We did get a new nut, just in case that got damaged. And I remember before I put a score line on here as to where the back of the nut was. So. There's the score line. I can remove the old nut. There we go. And fit the new one. And they're both the same length. Yes, they are. One and a half. And we can fit that one on there up to the score line. And then we've got the track rod end. Now, remember, this was damaged as well. It was really. Really loose and crappy. So we can install that. And that needs to go on until it touches that nut. And we can lock them together once it's on the knuckle. And that'll stop the whole thing from turning. Obviously it has to be in the down position, so that's where it would have been. And we're actually in lock at the moment, so that's fine. Pop that down there. And we just need another nut. Here we go another castle nut and that can go on there oh, I do like these vehicles, it's so easy to work on and we can tweak that up and again there'll be a torque setting for that but let's face it the torque setting is a little bit vague because you have to line up the castle nut with one of the holes for your split pin so you know just don't, don't exceed it there we go okay what's next um, hub, I suppose, and the brakes, and then we'll put the shock in last. I reckon that'll give us a bit more, a bit more free movement for now. Cool. Okay, so hub. Here we go. Right, using the hide end of the hammer. Right, there's enough threads there now, so as we do the threads up, that's going to draw the drive shaft in further on those splines. Okay, now don't forget the washer on these. Washer first, and then big nut. I've got to find my socket for that.
Okay, so that's all the way down, but it's still going to need to be torqued, and there'll be a torque setting for that, and I'll put it on the screen for you about now. Okay, now, in order to do that up with a torque wrench, we need to stop this from turning. And we can do that once the wheel's on. We can actually torque that up with the wheel in situ. Um, and we can put, well, we can apply the brake pedal if we want, lock the brakes off. So I'll see if I can do that. Okay, so what's next? I suppose caliper, really. We're getting pretty close. Right. Now, um, as with the caliper bolts on pretty much everything, a little bit of thread lock on there. Ooh, the wind's picking up. There we go. So, caliper on. Bolts in. And again, there's a torque setting for these, and I'll put it on the screen about now. Right, so just some clips to put on now for these brake pipes. Now I've got an assortment of bolts, I'm not entirely sure. Yes I am. Those two are for the lower plastic cowl. And these two are what's gonna hold this in place. One. And again, 10 newton meters uh, will be the pretty confident. And beyond the screen for you is the torque setting for these. Um, first of all, top castle nut, just a tweak. And I need to tighten it up until it, it's pretty tight. And one of the turrets of the castle nut, is that the right word? I don't know lines up with the hole there we go okay and we can put the old split pin through there and yes i got the genuine yamaha split pin so they better fit geez they feel only just the right size it goes a very long way in i think i'll be using my own on that if these are going to fit these are the next size up perfect that's what you want mr yamaha those are the ones that are too small your parts book's wrong there we go right top one done and now for the bottom one okay right let's get a tweak of this one up this is the lower ball joint nut I'll tweak that These split pins are all the way from England. Now on these on these ball joints you've got two holes. One that goes through here and the other one at 90 degrees. So there we go. Now when I fit the split pin, I always fit it that way with the long leg facing downwards. Which means I can then get hold of the long leg and pull it down and back under, under there, 
and just give it a little tap. Sorry, tank. There we go, nice and neat. And then this one, I'm going to push it up and then get my screwdriver and put it about there and give it a tap and it'll put a nice 90 degree edge on that and lock it into place. Whether or not I can do that to camera or not is a whole new thing. Okay, let's give it a go. There we go. Okay, so you can see what I mean? And that's giving it two definitive locks. Now, quite often in the motor industry, mechanics will only bend one of the pins and leave the other one dead straight. Can't quite get my head around that because you've only really got half the security doing that. But anyway, that's how I do split pins. And they seem to work for me. Now, lastly, I've just got the same thing to do on the, the track rod end. Put a split, split pin on there. Oh, bit more. Perfect. Now that one does look to be slightly smaller, so we'll use a Yamaha one in there. Okay, another one from England. So I'll pull that through from the back. There we go, look. And again, long one down. Now these are so easy, you your fingers. So I'll hold that into place. Bend that down. I'll trim off a little bit as well, because it's a bit long. Bend that up. Get the screwdriver, give it a tap, snip that bit off, and under there, we'll just snip that one off. There we go. Cool. Okay, we've still got to lock that bit off now. There we go. So, big spanners. I think they're both 22, I know one of them is. There we go, yes. Right. Let's just do that. There we go, that's all locked off good. Okay, so we've done all three castle nuts tight with split pins, calipers on, we've not pumped the brakes up yet, we've still got the big nut on the outside to do, and we've got the shock to fit. Let's fit the shock next. Okay, so same again with the shock, with all the shock bolts, bit of grease. I don't know, Yamaha yeah, doesn't seem to grease these anymore. I don't know why, I'm going to know something I don't. Okay, a bit of grease on there. Now one thing I have to check is whether the bolts come in from the front or the back. I'm pretty sure it's the front, it normally is. Uh, yes, from the front. Okay. So top one first. Now stickers to the outside. There we go. Right, that's that one. And we'll stick my nut on the back of there, I think. There we go. Now, stick that up. There we go. Right. God, I make it look so easy, don't I? That's because it actually is really easy. It's just a bit methodic. Right, so we get a 14 and 17. There we go. 14, 17. Now again, there will be a torque setting for these, and I'll put that on the screen for you about now. One. Like I said, I'll go around later on off camera and just double check the torque on all these. Right, 
it is time just to find out where that goes because I'm not happy with that. There should be, I think there's another clip that goes on. Okay, I was right. There's an extra little clip. So we'll put that around there. Clip it on. Nice and tight. And that then should, in theory, go under there. Oh, I have a sneaky suspicion that, that pipe goes underneath there, but I think it's a sharp edge. Let's have a quick check. Down under. Yeah, it does. And he's made a mistake. Holy crap. Okay, we can fix this. Easy. He says. With complete confidence. Uh, Phil Winter's watching this. He's going to be laughing his head off right now. Sorry, Phil. Phil's the um, technical advisor for New Zealand for all things Yamaha. And he's an amazing chap. Taught me an awful lot in the short time that I worked with him. Yeah, really good guy explaining stuff. He'll make a phenomenally good lecturer. But in all honesty, he'd be wasted as a lecturer. Far more valuable than what he's doing for all of us. Yeah. Real guru. He's not bad at riding a trail bike either, actually. <laughs> Better than me these days. Okay, so caliper off, and all of that has to go under there. That's right. There we go. And then it comes round. in lightly. Oh, we'll need some more fresh, some fresh thread lock, won't we? Okay. See, even the best make mistakes. I'm by no means the best, believe me. Okay. Two. Okay, so plan B, the second, uh, the first of these clips goes in like, like that. There you go. I had it upside down, unfortunately. Silly me. Okay, ten mil spare. No, ten mil socket. Yes. Tweak that up. Now again, you know, M6, 10 newton meters is fine, don't overcook it. This is that plastic clip that I'd uh, mislaid, that was still on the old arm, and that just pops into that hole there, look. It's on like a little spring, plastic tine, so you push it in, and that's it, done. One more to go. Okay, lastly is this metal clip, again, on top of the knuckle joints, and that just hard left-handed that just goes in there look there we go
and again just 10 newton meters for that it's only a baby m6 don't kill it the last thing you want to do is have to drill that out of that brand new casting okay what's left pump the brakes and i've got that very large nut to crank up to torque and then we put the wheel on and go have a nice hot shower Okay, I'm just going to put the wheel on with a couple of bolts. I want to get it onto the ground. Now I've left the plastic cover off deliberately, so I've got access to that large nut. Now, sure, I could get the big windy gun, and I could just crack that up as tight as possible. But you know, it wants to have a torque setting on it. It wants to be tight to a point. Um, I worked on a Subaru the other week which um, I reckon somebody in the past had over tightened this nut because it came into the workshops and that nut with this end of the drive shaft had sheared completely off and I'm told they only usually get that on the rally cars not on your domestic vehicles so it's pretty impressive whoever's done that um, and I think they just over tightened it and it's just basically stretched the, the end of the drive shaft caused a fracture point and it's just pinged off one day I'm not going for ultimate tightness, I just want to be able to have a way of locking that wheel from turning. There we go, that'll do. So I can lower that down to the ground now, apply the brakes, and, uh, well, we should be able to tighten that bolt up. Sorry, nut. There we go, and I'll put the torque setting for that on the video for you. Okay, so all that's left to do now, take the wheel back off, hammer over the, uh, the lock on the nut, and put the wheel back on with the, um, with the plastic cover. And then we're about done. Now, no need for an axle stand on this occasion, just the trolley jack's good, because I'm not going under the vehicle. So if it was to come down, it wouldn't cause me any harm. Right, okay, so I'm just going to hammer that down now with a punch. Right. Okay. Cool, right, wheel back on. Now this time I can fit the wheel with the plastic cover. Tweak those properly while it's on the ground. Excellent. Super job. Now these are not car wheel nuts, so don't tighten them up like it's a car. There will be a torque setting. <sighs> Well, there are still a few checks to do. I've got a few bolts to check for torque. I've not done to camera. It's not been a long night. It's not been too bad. Lots of interruptions, unfortunately, but that's the way it goes in the workshop. So there's still a few jobs to do on this vehicle. I've got a service to do. Ben's going to give it a wash. Um, and I need to check the wheel alignment. So I'll be doing that uh, in daylight tomorrow. It's, it's enough for tonight now. Um, but other than that, it's not far off. So probably... A couple of hours, maybe three hours work, and then we can load it on the trailer, take it back to the customer. Okay, well, if you've got any questions or, uh, or comments uh, on the video, then please leave them down at the bottom. 
If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then that's great. It's free, there's no charge. And you'll receive notifications every time I upload a video to the channel. So you can watch it if you like. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers.